time now for Consumer Confidential with KTLA 5's David Lazarus. David joining us live talking about consumer spending slowed last month, but it looks like people are still spending, Dave. They are. And Sandy, first, the Dow slipped into negative territory just minutes ago after the Fed's rate hike was announced. I'll get into that in the one o'clock hour. Elsewhere on the economic front, you're right. Retail sales, eh, kind of a, a red flag right now. Last month, retail sales up by a slower than expected 0.3%. So yeah, they're growing, but not by a lot. Because the flip side there is that uh, interest, uh, inflation was up by nearly 8% last month on an annual basis. That's a 40-year high. So that's deterring consumers from going out. You've got high inflation. You've got high gas prices. And then you've got the uncertainty of the war in Ukraine and how that might play out on the economic recovery. All of that is affecting consumer sentiment. And again, very important to note, consumer spending accounts for roughly two-thirds of total U.S. economic activity. So this is a stat that we watch very, very closely. The high gas prices are probably going to be an ongoing concern as we move forward. All right, DoorDash uh, trying to help its drivers offset the cost of the gas with a cash back debit card. But do you think there's a problem here? You know, there's strings attached, Glenn. DoorDash is following on Uber and Lyft, which also have announced assistance for drivers when it comes to high gas prices. But when you look at what DoorDash is doing, you know, it seems as though they're trying to make it difficult. On the one hand, DoorDash is saying that uh, drivers can get 10% back on their spending on gas, but only if they've got a DoorDash Visa card. Otherwise, if they don't, what DoorDash is offering is $5 a week in assistance but again, there are strings. They can only get that $5 if drivers complete 100 miles of trips in a week. They can get back $10 if drivers complete 175 miles in trips. They can get back $15 if drivers complete 225 miles in trips. That's different from how Uber and Lyft are doing it. They're both offering surcharges, which basically means they're passing along the higher gas costs to their customers but the surcharges aren't a whole lot. Roughly, in Uber's case, about 50 cents per trip. But here in California, with gas prices now approaching an average $6 a gallon at the pump, an extra 50 cents here or there, it's not going to go very far. Yeah, but it adds up for the rest of us. All right, David, talk about this uh, shakeup at Starbucks. Sounds like uh, deja vu all over again. Yeah, everything old is new again, Sandy, at least when it comes to Starbucks. Uh, Howard Schultz returning as interim CEO for the company. This is his third go round in the big chair. This comes as Kevin Johnson is, uh, has announced that uh, he is going to be stepping down as CEO of Starbucks. Now, Johnson gets high marks for guiding Starbucks through the pandemic, but at 61 years of age, sounds like it was a little exhausting for him, and he wants to back off from that. So Schultz makes his big return to the top seat, and it looks like he'll stay there at least for a few months. Starbucks announcing that Schultz will probably stay in the CEO role at at least until the fall as Starbucks now goes looking around for a new CEO. I'm guessing that uh, they'll take uh, anybody who, uh, who, who can take the heat at this point, maybe even the guy over my shoulder here who spends most of his days sleeping. But we'll have to see about that. Yeah, Thank he's going to say add more milk to the coffee, right? So you're saying the guy Thank that you. runs Starbucks is exhausted. <laughs> Maybe he's I'm saying, yeah, he should drink he's more a coffee. He's decaffeinated. Yeah. He's yeah. decaffeinated at the moment. Good yeah. call. Make that a double espresso. All right, David, thank you. There's a new 